Hello and welcome everyone out to another Game of the Month thing. Today I'm joined by the one and only Sir Lulz and SM Wiz. Guys, thank you so much for joining me again today. Yep, anytime. Glad to be here. So this month's Game of the Month discussion is a bit delayed, unfortunately, uh, because reasons. But Life yeah. Happens. Life happens. Anyway. So... Mm. Mario Kart Double know? Dash. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to stop you, you right I here. Was like, you, 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 and best game in discussion. Okay, we're I done. was like, it, things were delayed. He didn't want to admit it. He was busy building Wiley, style, Wiley Coyote style traps for the Easter Bunny. Mm, this may have actually been true. That's why time got away. But anyway, mm -hmm. Mario Kart Double Dash. So I, I remember not being super fond of this one back in the day. I didn't like it as much as Mario Kart 64 when it first came out. Okay, bye. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> all right, keyboard warriors, get ready. Stretches. <laughs> oh, boy. Deep breath. Proper <laughs> posture. Now, to be fair, I've actually given this game a lot more looks and chances, all thanks to Sir mm -hmm. Lowell's. Zachary, I really started to appreciate this game a lot more just because of how much you actually enjoy it, whichever side of the screen you're on. I'm a fanatic for this game. But, yeah. yeah, I even included it in my top 10 GameCube exclusives video. I've played it a lot more. The online multiplayer sessions we've done through the GameCube Discord server. And mm. that's all just plainly because of your passion for it. So it's been fun to revisit it, that's for sure. Yeah. Low hanging fruit for me. This is a 10 out of 10. Oh, no biased opinion, though. No, none whatsoever. Oh, my gosh. But yes. So how about you both tell me your first experiences with the game? Did you play it back in the day or is it more of a recent playthrough? Uh, well, it sounds like Sir Lulz has played it a time or two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did play it back in the day, um, back when I had time in my life to, you know, get perfect golds on the mirror cup. I don't have time to do that you know, nowadays. <laughs> I can relate. I mean, does anyone have time to do mirror mode all cups these days? I mean, today, no. It's... Not keep a good social life slash work life slash family life at the same time. Adulting requires too much time. It does. It, it, adulting is not as much fun as the pamphlet made it out to be. <laughs> I could just have the kids play through it for me, so that way I can have everything unlocked. <laughs> that doesn't count. You got to do it yourself, or it's ingenuine. In that case, I could just use the action replay codes yeah, I mean, and do to activate all unlocked cheats. That's why I always demo it in my tutorials, that, just so that, I can have everything that's unlocked. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, look, look, don't outsource it to your kids. If you're going to cheat, just cheat like an adult <laughs> and use the action replay, okay? Exactly, exactly. Don't, don't outsource the job. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's what you use the action replay to give yourself, like, world record times or whatever and then tell your kids to beat it. Ouch. So many memories with the action replay codes, and I have stories to share if we ever do custom robo. Oh, yeah. But anyway, Zachary, will you share with us how you first yes. experienced this game? Yes. So I didn't play it when it first came out because what? I didn't own a GameCube at that point. I was a broke kid, so... <laughs> you live on a throne of lies. <laughs> but I played it as soon as I got a GameCube. Uh, the GameCube bundle I got came from Radio Shack, you know, feel old club. Uh, it was bundled with an arcade classics combination. I don't remember what console it was, but it was like a lot of good stuff. Metroid Prime 1 with the Metroid Prime 2 bonus disc and a controller. So that's when I got my GameCube. I still didn't get Double Dash right away because, again, broke kid, but Metroid kept me busy. Anyway, for my birthday that year, my parents rented me Double Dash and uh, I pretty much played it the whole seven days that we had the rental. Uh, yeah, I had so much fun with that. Um, and then we were moving that year. We moved, and then I bought it at uh, GameStop when I moved, uh, when the move was complete. And uh, 
I've pretty much been playing it on and off ever since. Okay, so maybe your Throne of Lies is like kind of a tinier throne, but kind of I don't know. Like this kind of destroys like my entire mental image of you <laughs> right here. You're like right. I'm, I'm seeing you. I've always seen you like at the midnight launch at GameStop. Like <laughs> bought like five copies to put on five yeah. different Game Cubes with your LAN adapters. <laughs> like, like I just had this yeah. like idle image. Of of your Mario Kart history here, and it's just all I wish I could it's all that. crushed right now. Of, uh, never meet yeah. your never meet your heroes, people. Never meet your <laughs> heroes. No, the truth is, I'm actually that pig that's on the monitor behind me. This is just a robot suit. You know? mm, yeah. mm, gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, uh, double dashes. Yeah, so that's pretty much my loose history. Um, from. I pretty much just played it non-modified until about 2015 is when I started getting into modded consoles. Mm. And then that opened up the rabbit hole into like Dolphin Emulator, AR Codes. And then uh, 2017 is when I joined that GameCube server oh, yeah. that you're in. And then 2019 is when the guy who started it gave it to me because Has it been that long active. already? Yeah, I joined oh, it at man. first because I was like, I'm not going to start a community. So uh, no, and like then, uh, I joined it too. Like I don't yeah. remember when I joined that, but yeah. I can look when it was created, and we can see it was created about 2018. Yeah. It was really slow. It's kind of slow now, but that's just again adulting kind of keeps me out of it. But yeah, I mean, I'm I trying to grow it when I can. I haven't been um, active in it since like no, you took you over. Have not. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel yeah. bad about that. I do, but it's just, I have so much. Other eh, too stuff. many, too many balls to juggle. <laughs> but yeah, um, not active in my own Discord. Small server. plug, small plug for those that are interested. It's slow because adult life again is kind of keeping me out of it, but. I'm currently working on a mod for Dolphin emulator to make it stable to play online. So that way we don't have to like use Parsec. Um, uh, slow going, like I said, kind of tedious, but it is what it is. How about that bounty? Like, did that ever get anywhere? It was like at $500 at one time, right? It's at $3,000 right now for Ooh. anyone else that's interested. Yeah, if anyone's so interested if, in fixing the net code yeah. for Mario Kart Double Dash, yeah, so there's three thousand dollars just sitting used on netplay. Uh, three thousand dollars. The conditions bounty. for that is that it is stable to play online. That means, so brief summary of the problem: the game runs in lockstep, which Ugh. is great because it means it doesn't crash, but the buffer is too small. So essentially. Uh, I'm not going to explain the problem in depth because if I have to explain to you what's wrong, then you probably can't fix it anyway. But uh, <laughs> if you're if you have any experience, um, the source, the documentation, uh, what's the word? The map file is actually included on the disk, so the functions actually have names. Huh. Uh, so the the netcode is already named in the game code itself. It's just. I don't have the assembly knowledge myself to fix it. Mm, gotcha. But if you can, you don't even have to remove the lockstep nature. If you can just make it run at a full frame rate, you know, at a, at a, you know, decent, if, yeah, if you can just make it run at a full frame rate, that's good enough. Yeah. But yeah, for, um, I do have more experience with C plus plus. So that's why I'm working on a dolphin side fix for now. Hmm. So, yeah. yep, uh, $3,000 bounty. Sorry for the segue, but this hey, is... Hey, it's okay. Uh, it's part of it. It's part of it. Yeah. So, it's part of the game. Um, uh, hopefully, ICE will include a join link in the video description. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good idea. That's a good yeah. idea. So that way you know Down in the description, go. join the GameCube online Discord so you can play some yeah. Mario Kart Double Dash online. Yeah. It's a little sleepy, but um, we try to do at least monthly events and yep. uh, get an okay turnout. You know, it's, yep, yep. it's a little sleepy, but you know what they say? If you build it, they will come. So if yep. you say, hey, let's do some Double Dash, someone will hop on and play. Yep. But it's a good time. Like, playing the game through LAN was definitely such an interesting part of the experience because, I mean, the 64 version gave us four-player split screen. Obviously, Double Dash 
kept four player split screen or you could play two players per cart because it did that interesting new mechanic of two per cart. Mm -hmm. And it just really opened up a lot of interesting multiplayer options. Yeah. And that's one of the more interesting aspects of the game to me. More so than the actual content of the game. Because again, it's not one of my favorite Mario Kart games, but like the things you could do it with it were interesting. Like I remember playing through it yeah. um, with a friend and like we'd switch off between um, sharing a cart and doing two separate carts. And so it was, I don't know, it was fun, but it just doesn't stick with me as much as other memories do, sadly. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it was I... <laughs> like for me, Mario Kart Double Dash was just like, nah, it was it was Mario Kart game there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm the uh, oldest of five kids. And so like when the N64 came out, it was the first time that me and my siblings, because the fifth one was a baby at that point, didn't matter. So the four of us who were old enough to play games, first time we could all play the same game together at the same time, you know? Ooh. And so that continued with the GameCube and it was great. And uh, I, I loved like, it, it's funny because like, you know, sometimes you want to do the solo cart just to show off how good you are. But <laughs> There's something to definitely be said for doing the two player mode just for like two small features. It's like one, getting a double dash, which is the name when you both get the right timing at the start. That's mm -hmm. a nice boost. But the funnier thing for me is the person in the back who I refer to as the gunner because that's their job. Mm -hmm. uh, when they don't have an item, they can push the item button or whatever to punch. And you can yeah, it's, punch uh, other it's the cars. drift triggers. Drift so triggers, that's right. Drift trigger, triggers, right yeah. trigger, yeah. You can punch left or I right. Hatched. I thought it was, and I changed my mind. I was like, no, it's probably item button. But man, there's punching also uh... other cars. Punching other cars was the funniest thing, yes. especially when because you, you you know there's 16 tracks. You get to know them. You know every area that does not have a guardrail on an edge, <laughs> and you're like, someone try to pass me. I dare you. Because my gunner's going to punch you off the cliff and you're going to lose 10 seconds. Yeah, I was never there's that a, coordinated. Oh, it was there's hilarious. A third coordinate, there's a third uh, co-op uh, exclusive feature you missed. Uh, the drift. Yeah, and drift. Uh, drifting works differently in co-op mode. Mm -hmm. Instead of the driver uh, tilting back and forth to build up the spark, the passenger tilts back and forth to build up the spark instead. And that creates a great combo because the driver can just stay in that sharp turn and just watch for the sparks. Or if they're really coordinated, you know, they can just kind of play off each other. So it's like a uh, gunner builds the drift, driver executes on the drift, rinse, repeat throughout the turn. And uh, if you think snaking is annoying in a one cart game, imagine it with two players where the other player can just keep building the turbo. So. Yeah, yeah it, like, uh, this is exactly why I don't like playing this game a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that oh, when we get boy. to the negatives. But oh, yeah, the, for me, the co-op feature is what really solidifies this game because you can play it by yourself and it's a standard Mario Kart game. But it was a lot of fun for me because as someone else with siblings, but I um, was the only gamer in the family. So this was a game my sister could play because she would be the gunner and I would just focus on driving. And, uh, you know, it was, it's kind of, it kind of creates a great opportunity to, um, you know, it's like, we all have, we all know the joke of plugging in the controller for your brother, sure. but they're not actually playing. It's like, this is actually a game where the gamer can take the harder part, the driving part, and kind of just leave building turbo and throwing items to the player with the less skill. Um, that's but that's point. also, yeah, so it's a game that you actually can play with someone that sucks up Mario Kart. And uh, <laughs> it also creates a lot of fun opportunities in co-op mode. Um, I've actually had one landing party where we had the full 16 players and the coordination in that is insane. And we also had a house rule where every lap 
you had to swap and you couldn't swap in between the laps. So it didn't matter how good one player was at driving. They could only do that for half the race, you know? So it kind of was a great way to balance because it's no longer just one cart that gets ahead. It's like, and swap. And now they're no longer able to make their perfect turns. And then like the other carts get a chance to catch up. Yeah. The great equalizer. <laughs> yeah. And uh, me personally, I've always been a fan of co-op games where the co-op mechanic is the core mechanic of the game. Cause yeah. like, uh, again, Halo is an easy, uh, Halo co-op is a lot of fun, but it's essentially just two player campaign. Whereas something like portal Two co-op, the co-op part of it is mandatory where how I, how well you can communicate with your partner is just as much a challenge as the game itself. And Double Dash creates that because it doesn't matter how good you are at drifting. You're not throwing items. Your buddy's throwing items for you. You have to coordinate. You know, you're only one member of a team. So, yeah, yeah that's um, why I love Double Dash so much or one of the aspects of it. Yeah. I mean, the co-op was definitely the winner for that game. I liked the bomb mode in battle mode. Oh, yeah. I think it has the best mode battle fun. mode. I didn't yeah. really get into the battle mode outside of the bomb mode a whole lot for this one. <laughs> yeah. Like, we'd always go back to 64 for battle mode. Yeah. Um, I I don't know why. When people, when people ask me about, like, you know, what's your favorite Mario Kart? Because I have them all. I'm like... For I like I say for battle the N sixty four, but for racing actually double dash. Double dash is my favorite for the racing mode. Uh anything but we. <laughs> uh, anything but we. Anything but Mario Kart Wii. Like screw that hey, game. Don't, don't don't say dirty words in the podcast, okay? This, <laughs> no, we gotta say dirty podcast. words, that way people actually see, watch it. I heard your, your podcast my brain your rules, out there. think of the children, man. Okay. Yeah, I, oh I heard God. two. It was weird. I heard Mario Kart, which is great, and I heard Wii, which is interesting. But when you said it so close like that, my brain just blanked, and I, <laughs> and I don't know what you were talking about. This can't. This no. This doesn't comprehend the best-selling game in the franchise until eight. It's just so <laughs> terrible. Well, I mean, and that's best-selling thing. game on the platform, but it's awful. Yeah, mm. I mean, like, well, I mean, just because it sold the best doesn't mean it is the best. Okay. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think part of it is like, and, and so let's talk about that. Yeah, with the racing. I'm going to say it's all it the was, best because it it marketed itself to filthy casuals that are said it. But <laughs> it's like, not well, even that it's for the, casuals. The, 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 the we sold best. So, I mean, it makes sense that that one sells <laughs> best, you know? Mm -hmm. But such a uh, bad I, game. Say, I think it was so refreshing after so long to just race. And not be constantly inundated with blue shells, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because in modern ones, like, no joke, getting anywhere from three to five blue shells in a single three-lap race. Sometimes in a single lap. That's not okay. Yeah. That's not okay. Nah. And so it was just nice to be able to race and deal with the regular items attacking you yeah. instead of the stupid blue shell. Yeah. That's why Double Dash is like the last good pure racing Mario Kart game. Yes. And then and that's like, yeah, also it's like the DS version. The original Nintendo DS Mario Kart is also quite well, top that, tier in my book. That, that came out before the Wii, didn't it? I believe yes. so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, that's why. Yeah, pretty much. Everything before yeah. Wii is amazing. Everything after Wii is caveated. Something else I want to say while um, about this... Like, it's not even just, like, tracks and how they're shaped. It's tr how do I, like, it's how they're designed. Not mm. in terms of cosmetics or bins, but how they test you. Because yeah. I'm going to say the terrible name again. <laughs> A big problem I have with Mario Kart, like, <laughs> Wii and Up is... It should not be named! <laughs> it should not be named. Uh... The tracks, yes, they have different turns. They have different cosmetic appearances. But 
uh, they're too wide. There's like no real skill outside of just following the perfect racing line, which is where like the Funky Kong kind of kicks in. The thing that I like about Double Dash is the tracks were narrow, but not like too narrow, right? Like yeah. there's actual skill in like hugging the wall. Um, like <laughs> for example, Dino Jungle. Dino Jungle, when like when you go over that pier, it's oh, so man. narrow. You have to watch your driving, and you actually have to be a competent racer yeah. to not just go over that bridge, but then go through that zigzag. And the same thing with, uh, I think it's Mushroom City. Like there's so much traffic, you have to watch where you're going. Whereas we end up, they're just so wide, it doesn't matter. And you can even see this on Waluigi Stadium when it recently came to 8 Deluxe. It is not the same track. If no. you look at it, Waluigi Stadium in Mario Kart Double Dash, Waluigi Stadium in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, no, it's only the same in cosmetics. But like, And the big thing that irritated me is, especially at the end, where you zigzag through that mud pit right before the jump back to the finish line, and Double Dash, you had to change your drift. You had to change your turning to get through that without going into the mud. And 8 Deluxe, you just you just whiz right through that. It's it yeah, so like there's no skill in we and up. It's just the racing line, which is fun, fine if you like that, but at that point I would just say play in our play a physics or a realistic racing sim, but Mario Kart Double Dash is an arcade sim or an arcade racer, and that always has a little bit of unreal, you know, arcadey racing to it. Mm. You know, so that's the thing that really ir killed Mario Kart for me after Double Dash. The tracks are just too wide. I like, um, so I mean, talking about the tracks, like, this is a point where it felt like Nintendo did take some interesting um, uh, and risks isn't like the right word, but like experiments, they, you know, experiments with things. So like there's a lot of custom stuff going on throughout the game, you know, like you've got uh, two courses, Mushroom City is one, and I think it's Mario Circuits the other where you have the bomb cars driving around and the mushroom cars. Like, you're navigating track. Oh, no, wait, no, no. Oh, it's, uh, mushroom, mushroom Bridge. Bridge. Mushroom Bridge. Bridge. Mushroom Bridge and Mushroom City. Yeah. But, uh, like, being able to hit the mushroom car and have it spit out mushrooms or hit a bomb car to, you know, hinder an opponent, yeah. you know? It's I love the, the bomb power, I'm just saying. Yeah, the tracks had a, that, yeah, that's another good point. It's is like, the tracks you, had a dynamic element to them. The... The desert one had the tornadoes. The tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and that's why it's like, there's a lot of little things about that. DK having the boulders, you know, that you don't see elsewhere. Daisy Cruz it, has the tables. Daisy Cruz, yeah. And it's like, it's just lots of little things like that. that the alternating are paths on the you cruise were good too. You don't, you don't see them recycled. And so it's like, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. It's also, yeah. you know, it was a game where the tracks, they introduced alternate paths, you know? Yeah. And and it was interesting to and I don't mean like the Yoshi one on the N sixty four, you know, but like talking about how like on the mushroom bridge you can drive up over the bridge. Yeah. And and right after the start, you can cut hard right and go into a pipe that launches you. Just like, you know, there's another one on the Daisy Beach that sends you through a pipe that launches you. Yeah. You know, like just little things like that where it's like which is all common hat now. And anyone who plays yeah. Mario Kart takes that for granted, but it's like this isn't stuff that was like part of the series before. So it was yeah, cool they, to see them branch yeah. out that way. Yeah, they took risks they, too. Like Baby Park is like another risk. It's one of those Baby like Park anti... is the funniest thing yeah. in the world. Yeah, because it's like it's so simple, but at that same time, it's yeah, like it's there's like, so much it's, chaos. It's Baby like, Park made... is the ultimate test of skill and drifting yeah. capabilities. What are you talking about? No, it is, it is. Like, <laughs> you don't hit it's... that hairpin just right. You are now going from first to last <laughs> how, yeah, good are you even... how good are you at dodging all the shenanigans because i yeah. tell you too i love 
launching as much trash as I can <laughs> in that stage. Not even yeah. trying to hit my opponents, but I'm like, I am an it's, agent of chaos. It's so this. small. You don't even need to try to yeah. hit your opponents and because something's going to hit them anyway. All you yeah. need to do you is know, drop that's... a banana at that perfect yep. hairpin point, yeah. and you're screwing we... over half the course. And that's another was... one of those tracks that suffered in eight, <laughs> now that you mention it. because like, Well, you don't even do nine laps in it. Yeah, and it's... Um, Mm. That's really cool, Nate. That looks really good. Uh, sorry, nephew. Uh, show me some. That's really cool. Uh, he built a Lego scene. It was awesome. Nice. Anyway, nice. getting back to a uh, baby park. Uh, they took away the barriers. So even like you said, Ice, if you miss your drift, you just drive on a little bit of grass. Like well, that's that annoying. sucks. But that's that's not as like if you miss the drift in OG baby park, you hit that wall and you're just you're done. Yeah, you can't you're catch back up. Yeah, you're done at that point. So, and and again, it's super wide, you know. And I know people are gonna say this is the argument. It has to be wider so you can get 12 players on it. Well, my answer to that is, mm. if 12 players makes the tracks worse, 12 players is too many players. Because well, you can. I, I don't even think that's a great argument because it's like you're never driving shoulder to shoulder with all 12. Even yeah. with even with eight. You're never shoulder to shoulder with all eight. Yeah. So it's like, if it's narrow, guess what? Mosh more pit. skill. Fight, fight your way forward. Requires yeah. more skill. Yeah, it requires more skill. And if you don't want that, then turn off items and get the purest racing experience that you want. But don't make the tracks worse just to make them less crowded. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Like, I enjoy Mario Kart 8, but it's it's definitely it's not that better, it's but, definitely yeah. i don't know just my jaded eight oldness has its coming own... in like i enjoy playing eight but it's way too casual i think the and difference... that has its own pluses like pros and cons definitely yeah, like i love cons. that my kids regardless of how old they were were able to hop into it it could do the auto driving for them mm -hmm. and all these yeah. like assists like that was awesome i was happy they could play it but it's like yeah. i don't want to play it that much like i enjoy watching it more than actually playing it for that game whereas if someone's playing 64 it's like all right i got next if someone's playing double dash it's like okay let me hop in let's get another co-op cart going here yeah. um yeah. someone's um, playing we they are gonna just we're just gonna take that out and swap it so with like, um, some other game. Wii, the rest of us are getting our pitchforks and torches. <laughs> you know, unfriending if you, them. If you turned on the Wii version, we're just gonna hit the eject button right there and uh, <laughs> pop in yeah. friggin' brawl. Even like I don't even like Smash anymore, and we're still gonna pop in brawl. Like, let's go. Yeah, I think it's you know again everyone has a preference, <laughs> but I think uh eight is definitely better than that that shall not be named but <laughs> anything's better than that that should, yeah. not, that should not be named yeah comparing <laughs> super mario uh, cards better than that yeah. one <laughs> yes comparing eight to uh double dash because i've played you know eight player or eight cart double dash i think the difference again outside of tracks is item balance mm -hmm. and i think double dash between its tracks and its item balance struck a perfect chord because oh, yeah. good item balance in double dash introduces enough chaos that it kind of keeps the pack together but it doesn't throw so much chaos at it that skill doesn't factor in because if you play you know a circuit of eight or not eight um uh, if you play a circuit of double dash yes there'd be a little bit of chaos to keep things interesting but by and large the better players will still lead the pack but the pack is still close there's still shake up there's still players that maybe aren't as good still performing well in a particular race yeah. you know it's kind of they still get their moment of glory but in eight there's this annoying habit where there's like the pack and it's just pure destruction. And then there's like two or three carts ahead and you just, you can't catch up to them. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's first through third racing yeah. each other and then fourth through 12th racing each other. Exactly. Yep. yep. Every time. That's yeah. Every and time. that's kind of where the issue I have with 
again, like super wide tracks is it encourages that perfect racing line to exist. And it just means first through third, go ahead. And you're just never going to catch up to them. Whereas double dash again, I kind of rehashing my old point. The tracks aren't like, there is no perfect racing line. Like, Yes, speedrunners will have their perfectly optimized route, but by and large, in a party setting, <laughs> there's no perfect way to play the track, especially nah. with all the items going around. Nah. You know, beca- yeah. So you, you, you touched on items a couple of times now. I wanted to ask, uh, for you guys, what mm. is your go-to driver combo? Like, when you're playing, who, which two characters do you put in your cart? Daisy and Luigi. <laughs> always. Right, Daisy he's, and Luigi. He's, you... he's, always. He's just pushing the shipment forward right there. Just <laughs> just straight I up ship. going for it. And we can definitely <laughs> applaud it. Let's go. Let's be honest. I'm going to be totally honest. If it would let me pick the same person twice, I would just pick Daisy and Daisy and continuously swap the two. There you go. <laughs> what about you, Fun Ice? fact. Oh, I just fun do, fact of, I just do the Green I Koopa I and Red Koopa an code that every time. The drivers Daisy. So it's just 16 daisies in a land. And uh, because it was a land, it's both screens. So it's just daisy, 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 daisy. Oh, my God. So yes, it was not chaotic and beautiful at all. Oh, that's... that's. I'm sorry. I had a little sidetracked there. But uh, that's as scary. for an actual question, because I know there's like a racer's meta, I don't have one. I've always been too well, casual. No, no, no. And that's the... I'm not, I'm not talking about like the meta. Like, I think it's, it's honestly silly. Like, you... Like uh, you've probably seen, there's lots of articles and videos going around now. The most recent Mario Kart 8 Deluxe update apparently altered the meta, and people Uh-oh. are losing their minds over it. I did not hear and, that. Oh yeah, they they did tiny little tweaks to the balance of certain cart pieces and certain <sighs> characters. I hate cart and, pieces so much. And so yeah, the the meta has changed, and like all the previous god tier combinations are different now, and it's funny. Mostly to sit back with my popcorn and watch the fire, you know? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But what what about you, Ice? Who who are you putting in your double dash cart? Green Koopa, Red Koopa. I oh, nice. just always went with them because I always did Koopa Troopa in Super Mario Kart. They got rid of him in Mario Kart 64, so mm-hmm. I switched to Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi started getting really annoying uh, during the GameCube <laughs> era, so it's like, I don't want to play as Yoshi no more. <laughs> so we'll go back to the Koopas right there. And they got the green and the red one. It's like, all right, let's go. And like, you got the red one on the back with the wings, and like, you just head cannoning that the wings are making you go faster. So, <laughs> just, uh, it's just what it is. Like, it was fun. And then Yoshi continued to get super annoying. And so, like, we just don't touch Yoshi anymore because, like, Yoshi's one of the most obnoxious Mario characters ever now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and people can go review the video for Game of the Month discussion on Yoshi's Island to see. Why Yoshi morally is a very <laughs> questionable character. You don't want to support him. Yoshi's That's a true. Tax fraud. Let's like, it. Yoshi is a drug addict, tax evading sociopath. So, I mean, does Mario at least pay his taxes? Because we already know he's a murdering sociopath too. Like, I mean, Mario is a, the franchise where you actually want to root sociopath. for the villains. <laughs> villains, because yeah, you know Bowser's just liberating the princess, he's dude. Dude, the princess is just trying to escape an abusive relationship and the sociopath right. won't let her leave. She has to call yeah. in an entire army to come and try to free her from this freaking psychopath. And like, the why Mad does she Pat keep getting kidnapped? Still, She's not being kidnapped. Yeah. She's trying to escape. The, the Matt Pat videos on the Mario universe are hysterical. I oh, it's so all. good. It's so good. I love that. I love bringing that up and people just being like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you talking? No, stop. <laughs> I mean, and it's you, like, you just bring up how many, you know, how many innocent toads did Mario kill in Super Mario Brothers? Yeah, look yeah. in the right. instruction booklet block, for Super Mario Brothers One. They got turned into blocks. The entire yeah. population of the Mushroom Kingdom was transformed into blocks. And what does Mario come and do? He just comes in and obliterates so yeah. many blocks. And DK. And You're, DK oh, in gosh. the DK arcade cabinet was just getting revenge from when he was a literal slave to Mario. Yeah, that too. Past. Like he's he's freaking like animal abuse, murder, kidnapping, yeah. Stockholm syndrome. Like there's nothing Mario has done that makes him hero worthy. 
Not a thing. Nintendo just wants you to forget, except, man. Except race carts like a boss. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's he the only, for see, yeah. that's the only but, uh, thing he's done yeah. right. <laughs> it's, yeah, now that we've talked about how awful Mario is. Well, you know, I was the oldest sibling, so I was Mario. And so oh. you know, we're, we're good. Um, so Mario was my dude from Super Mario Kart onward. Oh, and, uh, you know, so with Double Dash, I do Mario and the uh, Red Paracoupa. Because uh, I like having the fireballs. Plus, you got to, you know, oldest, got to be Mario. Yeah. But I love oh, getting right. the special as the Red Paracoopa. I didn't even getting think the about triple that. Red Shell. I, I didn't oh, even I did like think that. about the special items you that's get the, for choosing the, the like, characters. Yeah, I yeah I I did it based on you know the special item. Yeah. Um, In that case, like, I would probably have to pick Baby Bowser and Daisy. Baby Bowser's shell is boss, that and I like so the huge. shield that the princesses provide. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I still liked the three green shell, three red shell combination really yep. well because oh, so good. you just Super get the homing good. capabilities. Another perk of skinny then, tracks is mm. green shells are actually useful for ricochets. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I love you know playing again for this in preparation for this discussion. I was like sniping people with green shells feels so good. I forgot yeah, how it easy it was in older games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not that it was easy, but easy relative to the modern games. You know, the only oh. thing the shells are good for in the modern games is just being a shield behind yep. you. Yep. You know, like if you Which, get a green shell, that's all it's good for. And that irritates me. Like in. Yeah. Yeah. No, like no, I no. Like in, the... in, in modern ones, it's only good for defending yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which I had totally if you even again. get one, so this, like Mario Kart 8 yeah. barely ever gives you defensive items if you're up ahead, you only get friggin' coins. Yep, yeah. So, the that was funny you talk about the defensive items. So, playing through this, you know, like, so I mean, I put a ton of hours into it in high school, but that was a long time ago, and I forgot that, like, you just they just like kind of stripped a couple features out of this game, you know, like being able to hold an item behind you, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. like that was interesting. Also, being able to look behind you while driving, you know, couldn't do that. And I was like, okay, so hold on. I can't hold the item behind me, and I can't even look behind me to aim at somebody. So now I'm just kind of doing guesswork while I drop stuff. Yep. That was part of the strategy they wanted. I'm not making a defense. I'm just no, saying because no. I know the... like, and It's just interesting. And, like, that's, yeah. like, it's not, like, It is you know, an interesting strategy. It's, not, it's the... not something I can even, like, necessarily put, like, not being able to hold behind you is a little bit of a negative. Not being able to look behind you is more of a just interesting decision. It's just a, that was it's just a game design yeah. choice on that one. Yeah. But not being able yeah. to hold an item behind you was a big negative to me back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it could... Uh, um, you go ahead and finish your thought. And then again, the lack of jump mechanics were a big negative to me from back in the day because of all the tricks that it allowed you to do in Mario Kart yeah. 64. And so it's like, okay, now the tracks actually have more built-in shortcuts sure but like it just took away this whole aspect of what made the earlier ones so much more fun too because i mean jumping was a big thing in super mario kart too like you get the feather and like it opened up whole new pathways to you like super mario kart introduced the shortcuts really well there were a couple i mean even even official ones in 64 jumping jumping over a banana or jumping over a shell yeah 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 and I mean, like, it was just a big part of the game's, like, I don't know if culture is the right word for me, but, like, it was a big part of what made the game Mario Kart was these mm, jump yeah. things. And so when they stripped that out, I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah. What are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, looking yeah. behind you, again, that's just a design choice. That didn't really bother me. I never really looked behind me a whole lot to begin with. Like I'm not as pro as Wiz apparently in the older games. I actually <laughs> look think behind me. Uh, sniping for life, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not that pro apparently, but yeah. um, I actually think uh, yeah the not being able to look behind you, and uh, this is just pure opinion. This isn't a negative or a positive for me. It could go either way, but not being able to look behind you and not being able to hold an item behind you, I actually think they complement each other in a certain. Str- a skill in that seeker items still show up to you like you have that icon and you hear the sound yeah, yeah. so the interesting thing that i think these two game design choices enable is sniping with the green shell because you have no warning to it 
So it kind of encourages good green shell throws. Because, you know, if you saw that green shell warning icon or if you could just look behind you or hold the shell behind, hold a defensive item behind you at all times. So I personally kind of like it, but I think it could go either way. I think you know, the and, argument and can be could, made it's more skill based. Sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it could just be me liking this game and just refusing to accept that as a fault. You know? <laughs> so, like I said, pro, con, love, hate, I'm not going to. There's a reason I'm why he has that me. background, y'all, and it's just to hide the shrine he has to Mario Kart Double yes. Dash. He's got, like, all the yes. marketing boxes from GameStop, like, up on there. Yeah. And it's, like, candles and, <laughs> like. It's on a pedestal, like, hey, Arnold. Like, <laughs> there's Helga's a spotlight Arnold going shrine. on to it right yeah. there. Like, it's just he's all. Actually sitting, he's actually sitting in a garage. And I'm talking, like, a Jay Leno-type garage. <laughs> And he's got reproductions of every cart from Double Dash in there. You see, you're both wrong. I'm actually in Miyamoto's house. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know I'm here though. So I don't know. Quiet. I haven't seen any Pikmin walk by on your screen. I'm just saying. <laughs> you think I would be so careless as to, you know, let let filthy what? creatures in here? Why? Why do you? Why do you think he has like the ethereal arms going on right now? Like there's green mm -hmm. Pikmin on it, just affecting the green screen <laughs> capabilities of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't yeah. even. It's, no, it's, it's not even one of the colors. <laughs> it's a new color that's being introduced in yeah. four. Just spoiler All alert the... to everybody: they're introducing green <laughs> Pikmin. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! It's uh, like the, the, the green ones got cut. You know, they got cut from the game. But he, had mode, he loves them, and effects. so he brought them home. He gave them a home, a place to live. So yeah. So they didn't go in the dumpster behind Nintendo's headquarters. <laughs> that's where they yeah. put. That's where they put all the excess purple ones. <laughs> like we have too many purple ones in this game. Let's cut a few of them out. All right, go chuck them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that's actually a nice uh, segue. As much as I love this game, no oh, game is perfect. No. Yep. Even I have to say that about Double Dash. <laughs> uh, as much as I love it, and I don't think it's a problem to Double Dash specifically, but it is something that newer, newer games have added that is good, is the retro tracks. Because mm -hmm. as good as Double Dash is, going back to it, you know, it is kind of sparse in the number of tracks it has. Um, oh, yeah. And snaking, as much as I... It's kind of a double edge. Like, I like how drifting works in Double Dash, where you have to go back and forth. But the way it works is it does allow snaking, which I think is the only shakeup to the to the chaotic fun that I originally described for this game. Because if you get a player that knows how to snake, they're essentially just gone and you can't stop them. Oh, even man. with all the chaos. Snaking ruined so, freaking Mario Kart DS online. Yeah. Like, yes. as soon as someone figured that out, everyone was doing it. It's like, this isn't even yeah. fun to play anymore. Yeah, so as much as I <sighs> love Double Dash... The tracks are kind of sparse. It has a good number of characters, so um, I think that's fine. More yeah, what you I get the two unlockable better, ones, but... too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pinata Plant and King Boo. But yeah, lack of tracks, number of tracks. I think the tracks it has are all A's, I think. Um, but I'd have to sit and judge them all. But by and large, they're all winners, or at least yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, I was like, I... It was funny. I was going through and kind of notating as I played through them, and I was like, "Oh, I was like, I, and maybe it's because time has passed and we have more stages." But I was like, "You know, Peach Beach it doesn't really feel like it's bringing a lot to the game. Like yeah. that, the Quiddle Clacks are fun, but they're also easy to dodge." Uh, I think the tide mechanic is interesting, but there's that. Yeah. Um. Another complaint I have, and this one was in Super Mario or Mario Kart 64, uh, the blue shell in Double Dash flies instead of goes along the path. So the blue shell only hurts the carton first, whereas yep. in 64, it hit everybody. because it went on the ground, it hit everyone in the way. <laughs> and I even think they could like still show you the blue shell icon 
So you, if you're not in first and you see that icon, you just know to get out of the way in the middle so you can avoid it, but it's not a guarantee if there's chaos. Yeah. Um, I will say that about Double Dash, going from 64 to Double Dash, it's, it was so nice to not have to worry about your items killing themselves as you launched them. Yes. That was a big problem that, in 64. Nice like, change. you shoot off that yeah. blue shell and it spins around you, hits a wall, and it's just instantly dead. And you're like, oh, why? <laughs> um, yeah. And then the red shells, like, you always had to make sure to shoot them on a straightaway instead of a turn. Yeah. Otherwise, they were just going to die. Like, that was that was such a nice thing going into double when dash and being like, pew, 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 red shell. they're just it's going so where they need to go. Let's go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, anyway. Yeah, it was interesting talking about some of the things. I totally forgot until I started playing this again. But when you clear the Grand Prix, like when you clear a cup, it kicks you out to the title screen. Yeah. You know, instead of just taking you back to the Grand Prix, it's like, why would you assume that after one race that I'm done, you know? Yeah. Especially because they give you times and it's like, it takes less than 10 minutes to clear a cup. Why would you think that I'm done playing in less than 10 minutes? Yeah. Maybe a limitation in the engine or something. I don't know. But something it's, else. everything always took you back to the main menu or yeah. title screen instead of the main menu. And the main menu would go to that attract video really quickly. Quick. Yeah, it did. And it was super annoying because, like, you'd just be looking away talking to someone. All of a sudden, it's playing that video and you're having to try to skip out of it and it just won't yeah. load quickly. So that was... Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not a deal breaker. It's just obnoxious. Yeah, I was like, um, the other thing, this is funny. I don't think I, I probably never even noticed this as a teenager, but as an adult, just some of my preferences changing. You can't navigate the menu with the D-pad, which nope. is yeah. another interesting choice. Yeah. It's funny. The further along we get in console generations, the more I revert to the D-pad for all navigation mm -hmm. of consoles. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Because I never even noticed when I played it back <laughs> I, in like 2004 yeah, or 5 I, age, you know? I don't think I ever tried to use the D-pad for navigation back then. And that maybe speaks to the difference in how those control sticks worked versus control sticks nowadays. Yeah. Well, I mean, I to be fair, Nintendo's, even now, Nintendo's notched gating made navigating things a lot like cleaner yeah, than yeah. non-notched gating. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's yeah. a factor because like, yeah, I don't yeah. like using, I don't like using thumbsticks for menu navigation because you'll be trying to quick scroll something and all of a sudden you'll just go D -d 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 -d. and like, yeah. no, I want to go over here. Something so, um, else that is a negative. I said, I love the co-op, <laughs> but I still think it's limited in ways because there is a lot of skill that can be in there, but outside of throwing items and punching occasionally, there's not really a lot to do as the passenger. Granted, I don't know what they could give the passenger and make it work in a single player perspective, but not much. I wish they, f yeah, but I still feel like there are things they could have done there. Mm -hmm. Like, Maybe the passenger could aim a green shell before throwing it. So that way they don't have to coordinate with the driver to line up a shot. They can just, you yeah. know, free up the driver to stay on the path and then kind of interesting. throw sideways the yeah. green shell kind of with a spin on it. That would have been you know interesting what? because when you're playing mm -hmm. co-op on the same cart, you obviously are sharing the same screen. It's not a split screen. So yeah. it would have been interesting if they could have made it split screen and let the passenger look behind you. Yeah. Like you were saying. Like that that would have been a fascinating game changer yeah. for sure. Yeah. That and was... even if it did stay single screen and they were still limited to being able to or like they could still throw at an angle sideways if they're in an angle a narrow corridor and they kinda of want to ricochet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know? like have some kind yeah. of on screen indicator of where you're pointing. Mm -hmm. Sorry to my mic. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. So yeah, like the con mechanic, I still love it to death, but they could have done more to make it interesting and enticing, rather than just being, "Hey, throw items for me." Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting trying to figure out that balance because you're right. If if you're the gunner, um, if your driver misses the items, 
you do just kind of get bored, you know? You just yeah. Or even when they hit it, you get it, and if you have the opportunity to use it right away, you do, and then you're kind of just bored until they hit items again. Yeah. But it's like, well, you know, a solution, not necessarily the solution, you could put more item boxes in so people aren't bored. But then the insanity <laughs> level in the game goes up if it's just yeah. constant items. Constant yeah. items. And to, you... to, to your point, it'd be interesting if they would have given the, the passenger something else to do. As maybe as simple, I, and I'd never thought of this before, you know, the whole, yeah, they need something to do. But it's like, you know, rocks. you see like bobsleds, the guy in the back, you know, does a little push off, you know. It's yeah. like you could potentially have had the person in the rear when they don't have an item have the option to do like a little push off to give like a little boost or something. And or you, they you could, could you even. Could figure out, you could figure out what the timing is for that. Like they have a yeah. limited number they can use in the race. Or it's a stamina meter that replenishes, or you know, whatever you know. But they could even potentially help the driver. Like, say they could lean, like lean right or left, and that might kind of scooch the cart. Like, boop. well, I think so, the, the punch does that, doesn't it? Doesn't the punch throw oh, the yeah, car? Yeah, I guess a it bit? does do that. Yeah, the yeah. punch throws. But a they bit. could still like it's... assist with. That's mentioning that you interest. Because I, I, I know, I know, thing. I say that. Because my brother, my younger brother, definitely trolled me sometimes. If he got, if he didn't have an item and he was bored, and we yeah. were near one of those edges, and I was doing a sweet drift, he'd sometimes throw a punch. You know, yeah. it's like that could also be this. another interesting <laughs> mechanic that would be exclusive to the co-op. Is say the co-op player, if they hit the item button with no item in their hand. And they time it perfectly when an item's coming up behind them. They could either deflect the item or maybe even pick it up. Like catch Bust, it. Busting yeah. out that uh, that melee mechanic where you could grab items out of the grab air. Out of the air. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Like, I don't, like you said, I don't know what the solution is, but I do wish there was something more to do as a passenger. Well, it open kind of just. I would say open invitation to the modding community. Think of yeah. cool stuff the passengers can do and implement it. Yeah. Or even like maybe Mario Kart 9 will introduce us to dual racing yeah. carts again. I wish. I wish. Like we haven't I seen. Would. That's the whole thing about Double Dash and like why it still stands up so well today is because it is literally the only Mario Kart game that is like this. It's really the only kart racer, too, that's like that. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I'm not too familiar with most of the kart racing games, but I mean, like, just looking in within Mario Kart itself, like, Mario Kart 64 set the standard for what Mm -hmm. the franchise was, because obviously it was in 3D, where Super Mario Kart was not. Like, it took a lot from Super Mario Kart, transitioned it to 3D, and that's what they've been building on ever since, and then... Their direct sequel to Mario Kart 64 was such a grand departure, and then they just went right back to what Mario Kart 64 was doing, and we've never seen these yeah. particular gameplay features, and like none yeah. of this stuff has ever been explored again. Like none of the co-op modes, none of the dual racing. Like it'd be fascinating to see Mario Kart 9 bring this back yeah. versus. Or I would even just like a, <laughs> they could even keep it like as a spinoff, right? Like yeah. do an HD port of Double Dash and just bring it up. Use it as an excuse to kind of bring it up to modern standards without necessarily it competing with the other Mario Karts. That because yeah. like it, I don't think it would compete with Mario Kart Nine because. Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario Kart on the online service don't compete with 8. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, nothing could, competes with eight. Eight, eight's attach yeah, so, rate is the most insane yeah. thing for any console exclusive ever made. So, like, they could just, the attach in rate my is opinion... Unbelievable. Yeah, they could just, in my opinion, release Double Dash as it is, but with, like, maybe... Even if it's friends only online multiplayer, just Mario Kart Double Dash with actual functioning online, and it wouldn't even touch eight, right? You know, nope. Yeah, because like GameCube yeah. coming to Switch Online, they could do it. I was, they could I was do like, it. hold up, you said with actual functioning online, you do realize yeah. we're talking about Nintendo right now. Yeah, that's and that's the punch. <laughs> that's actually a good, <laughs> and that's actually a good launch pad. Uh, it's one of those 
I don't want them to do Mario Kart Double Dash on a GameCube online platform because knowing Nintendo, they'll just bring it back as it is. And I mean, the thing is, if I wanted four player, like they obviously wouldn't include the land mode. They're too lazy for that. All right. I'd love to be surprised, but they're not going to do it. So if they just kind of bring it back, like GameCube online, like how it is within 64, four players online only, I can already do that with Dolphin Netplay and Parsec, right? Yep. I don't need Nintendo to do it. So that's, I don't want Nintendo to bring Double Dash back because they're just going to bring it back in ways we can already play it. They're not going to actually improve the game to make it better. And they don't even need to do a lot. Like I said, if they just brought Double Dash back as it is, but it has online multiplayer with eight players, shut up and take my money. <laughs> but if they're not doing that, then they're just doing the game as it is. And I already have that. I don't need that again. Yeah. So, And if they do it, then that's not an incentive to improve it. So I don't even want them to touch it unless they touch it with the intention to make it better than what it currently is. Touch Nintendo, touch it good, baby. Yeah. <laughs> when it, yeah, when <laughs> Nintendo touches things good, when they touch it good, it's great, but otherwise it's terrible. All right, everybody, right, make like sure to ask Zachary about Advance Wars um, in the comment section, and we're just going to just post uh -oh. them to him, like screenshot them to him. Just just ask him uh -oh. about Advance Wars. Like, uh we're going to have to have a whole discussion about Advance Wars one of these yeah. days. <laughs> See, and I have no idea what the story is here. I'm just watching his face and being like, ooh, that's a cool story. I don't even know what that story is, but it, sounds, it looks good. <laughs> it's torture, but that's... I'm just, that's, that's I'm just happy that sure. my memory is still good enough that I could pull it back, even though we haven't talked about Advance Wars in like three years. Like I could just, oh, yeah, I remember this. Let's go. Yeah, you know, so, good thing for me. <laughs> I guess I do because I uh, I wanna I think we need to start wrapping this up. Not immediately, but one last complaint before <laughs> from me at least before we get to closing notes. And this one kind of irritates me because this is the Nintendo laziness, right? Like, there's two kind of things. Like, there are things that are game mechanics, like we were talking about, looking behind you that. Even if you don't like it, you can respect it for what it is, right? Like, no game is perfect. Mechanics might jive better or worse with certain personality types or play styles. This one bothers me because it is actual just laziness. Granted, it could be laziness, or I should say cutting due to crunch. That's possible, but I don't think that's the case. And I refuse to believe they could have done better. They couldn't do better. I love the land mode for Mario Kart. And I'm not even mad that it doesn't work online because it was a land mode, right? That that wouldn't be fair to expect the land mode to work online. It's, it's not exclusive to Double Dash. It would have been great if it did, but whatever. The thing that bothers me is the land mode is uh, restrained. It isn't... Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. Or it's like a double-edged sword. It's great because you get the pure Mario Kart Double Dash experience with eight carts up to 16 players. It is so much fun. But the laziness, the shortcuts they took are so annoying because you can't pick your character, mm -hmm. right? The characters are randomly rolled at the start of the race, and that's just what you get. Yep. I wonder if part of that was just done for fairness, too. Because realize if you play 16 players, the statistical chances that each of those 16 has a different favorite is very, very small. Like, how, um, how do you fairly let people choose? Like, you're choosing first and you're choosing second. Like, I don't know. The, the, like, the random roll, it, it is an easy solution. And that maybe is lazy, maybe it's crunch, or maybe it was just, you know, let the gods decide and be fair. You know, let fate decide. Yeah. That is possible, and I will give credit to that idea because that is a very Nintendo thing to do to limit options in order to make a compelling experience. And that is actually a design philosophy I generally approve of, right? Make a compelling choice. 
I do agree with that to an extent, but you know, it's one of those like is kind of like a comparison. Is a game difficult or does a game's difficulty make it a challenge or does a game's difficulty make it frustrating? Mm -hmm. And it's a delicate tight rope to walk. So in this case, going pulling back to this, it is a compelling argument, but I would argue the needs outweigh the benefits because, you know, this game is so balanced on those decisions that you make that I would argue people being able to make a choice about how they want to approach a race is better than making sure each racer is a unique character. You know, because I think that is a more compelling argument than making the characters unique, right? Like, what do you want to take into this race versus what you're given because sometimes you get screwed and you get fat characters that with the slow cart and, <laughs> and that's just what you have to deal with. At the same so, time, it also could have been made possible to have repeat selected characters. Yeah. Or right, they could now even... you're breaking the universe. <laughs> I know. It's almost like so it's a video game or something and multiple instances of the same character can exist in the same plane or something. Or like, how they get hit this? with a bomb, like, and hey, the worst thing that hey, happens is the look, cart flips over. You go to Disneyland, you don't see two Mickey Mouses standing next to each other, okay? <laughs> there are rules to be observed. They have to be at least 30 feet yeah. from one another. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. How many Mickey Mouses um, are at Disneyland? Like, four or five at any given could. time? What? They're, they're, yeah. But they're in different areas of the park with a long enough walk that it's feasible. It's plausible yeah. deniability <laughs> saying, oh, Mickey just got there before you. See, that's yeah. why when you get your picture taken with Mickey, you just get a Sharpie and you scratch him right on his hand right there so you can tell which one you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ice yeah. in the trees, paintballing the Mickeys, tagging them. So. <laughs> I, that's the same Mickey. There that's we go. Like, oh, that's that the Mickey we took a picture Mickey. with that's earlier, guys. Mickey. We found him. We Mickey. found him again. Yeah, saw him earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be a compelling, I guess, kind of getting back on track. That would be more compelling if there weren't other lazy shortcuts. Do it in Smash. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can do it in Smash. But well, Smash uh, is action figures. You can have multiple action figures. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to argue it's lazy on the grounds that there was other UI elements they could have added that don't exist for no reason at all. For example, the split screen selecting. So for those that don't know, in Double Dash, you connect the LAN and that's it. The LAN is closed off. If you're not in, you're not coming back in, even if you're in the menu, which I think is kind of stupid. Small thing, but you know, the bigger issue that leads to is like, you can't mix and match screen sizes. So for example, you can either have the full screen, you can have two screens, or you can have four screens. The problem is that you can't combine these. So it's, it's either all the consoles are four screens or all the consoles are one screen. You can't mix and match this. Mm. And it's really annoying. And say you had five players, you have to have one con you have to have both consoles on four screens but the player that has their own TV still only has a quarter of the whole screen. The other 75% of the screen is literally just black. I thought it did spectator cameras too. Yeah, any console that doesn't join the LAN race becomes a spectator. But even the spectator camera is limited to this. So mm -hmm. if you have, like, say, three consoles, the two, you have two in four player split screen and they join the third console will become a spectator with four cameras on player one. And you can't change it. It doesn't even have like four cameras on four different racers. It's four cameras on player one. Hmm. I'll so bet you that was some sort of technical limitation. No, no. Because, you know, AR codes can do it. There actually is an AR code that forces the screen resolution, and it hmm. works perfectly. So. Yeah, Don't know. yeah. We've actually looked. I've looked at the code, and I've had some other modders look at it. You know, just kind of browsing for fun, and literally, I don't want to say literally because obviously there's some other tertiary data that is shared between the GameCubes, 
but all that happens is there's an array, 16 controllers big, and it is synchronized between the game cubes. That is the only thing that is synchronized. So literally, they probably share some random seed when the session is initialized, and then they just know, hey, I am console two of four, and then they literally just reverse engineer what cart they are from that data. But there's no like, you are carts one through four, your carts five through six, and your carts seven. You know, so it is pure laziness because we can do it with AR codes that force this GameCube to be this many screens, this GameCube to be that many screens. It can be done. They literally just did it out of laziness. It's time to feed all of Mario Kart Double Dash's net code just through chat GPT and see if it fixes it. Like, let's <laughs> see what it does. Go. There yeah. it goes. Here you um, go. Fix you're gonna this. Exceed the, yeah. You're going to exceed the character limit. But. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's, that's the thing that really irritates me is, like you said, if it was just the carts and the characters had to be unique, I still wouldn't agree, but I could accept that because that's just how it is with the game in local online or local multiplayer anyway. But the fact that you can't mix and match screen sizes, the fact that it's all literally just 16 controllers in an array that is shared in this lockstep buffer. And another really annoying problem is there's no error correction. So if, if literally one cart on one screen becomes a single pixel off kilter it crashes the whole session there's no error correction you know and time to implement some rollback net code yeah or even just the lazy approach of just like the cubes because again like if it was a land session you wouldn't even need to synchronize controller data right like you should but like i guess what i'm getting at is surely if you're in a net a land session and you're assuming the perfect network connection why can't you just synchronize cart positions if there's an offset, right? Because obviously they check if there's an error. So why not just correct the error? You uh, know, no. like, you, uh, and, no. a, and if a cart leaves, yeah. if a cart leaves, it crashes the session, right? I don't know. It's, it could just be crunch. I wasn't there. I don't want to <laughs> accuse them. My passion is showing, though. <laughs> well, and I think this was the only Nintendo-developed game that made use of land adapter, right? Uh, no, it was Kirby's uh, Air Ride. 1080, Kirby Air Ride, and Homeland make use of it as well. well. Let, let me rephrase that. Okay. The first one that Nintendo did, right? The first Nintendo-developed? Because Fantasy Star, oh, I think, was that Sega, was Sega. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, this was a learning experience for them. That's a good point. Uh, the other interesting thing about the LAN adapter, Zelda, too. right? Like, Nintendo, I don't know. I, I, I would know. say, like, yeah. I don't, I don't mean to sound like an apologist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking, yeah. like, you know, it's, it's yeah. realistic Again, development. Sometimes, sometimes you get into a project, you write things on a whiteboard, and you're like, that sounds great. And then you have to go build it, and you're like, I've made a terrible mistake, <laughs> you know? Yeah, fair <laughs> point. And... And I do want to give them that concession as well, because like I, I wasn't there. I didn't develop it. I don't want to say it was easy, but I don't know. It's kind of like my opinion on it is just because it's hard doesn't make it a reason. Kind of like it's kind of like saying the Olympics is hard, so let's make the Olympics easier. It's like, no, the fact that Olympians train to be good at the Olympics, which is hard, is what makes it great. So... I don't buy that excuse of it's hard. It's like hey, that's yeah. what makes you a professional. Here's my no, but... here's my question. I know on Fantasy Star Online One and Two for GameCube, it's limited to 10 megabits a second. The network adapter for GameCube itself, I believe, was a 10 100 Ethernet adapter, but for Fantasy Star, it was locked only into that 10 mode. Was that the case for Mario Kart? Or is that just a global case where even though it was a 10-100 network adapter, it's locked into 10 mode only? Something I should research. I don't know. I only know that Fantasy question. Star was locked into 10. That is a good We'll have question. to see if we can uh, 
well, yeah, let's see if there's like a homebrew app where we can test this. Just like yeah, I don't push know. some data through it. But here's the That's thing, too, question. though. Like the Swiss finally implemented network loading capabilities for GameCube games so you could load them on network attached storage. So a 10 megabit connection wouldn't be fast enough to do that. Like it wouldn't be. I don't know. 10 Dude. megabits is equivalent to about, to, uh, what, a megabyte a second? So yeah, GameCube discs or... read at like 3 to 5 megabytes a second. So, yeah, that wouldn't be fast enough. So, apparently, Swiss has unlocked the 100 megabit mode, right? Like, huh. again, this is all just it's... rapid, rampant speculation it in is... my head right now, just thinking about the network adapter, because I know that it was a big deal to a lot of people um, back in like 2009, 2010 ish, that Fantasy Star was locked into 10 megabit only. Like I remember that being such a big deal for so many people. Could also be the the Fantasy Star servers. Oh well, yeah, that's the, the thing. Like the net. game itself locks the mode because yeah, Fantasy saying, Star right? Online was how people used to load up Homebrew on the turn. GameCube. Like well, that's I'm, why that I'm, game was so expensive in. for a while yeah. because it was the only way to get <laughs> yeah. Homebrew on a GameCube. Yeah. So people so, would literally sideload apps uh, through the network I, adapter. I'm, I'm, cutting, I'm him... cutting with a non sequitur <laughs> that unfortunately I have to drop because it's my kid's bedtime. <laughs> but you, uh, you gentlemen, continue the Mario Kart discussion along with these um, delightful segues into just Fantasy uh, Star. Let's, let's just go ahead and call it here. Yeah, man. we can call it. Yeah. <laughs> I've said I made my piece. One last tidbit. Uh, I'm not mad at this because let's be honest, the odds of getting 16 game cubes together it's like five, in a land setting probably wasn't going to happen. Double Dash actually has enough uh, code. Actually, the array is actually limited to 16 consoles that could theoretically connect in Double Dash. It just limits itself to eight. Hmm. So it could have done 16. Anyway, just an interesting side fact. All right. Uh, Leave yeah, us with your I'm final sure. thoughts, Wiz. Uh, I think I'll go back with the earlier one. Uh, Double Dash. Best one for just racing, you All know. Right. Yeah. Mario Kart 64 for battle mode, Double Dash for racing. Have fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, have a good so one, sir. Thanks for, for me. I think Mario Kart Double Dash is probably one of the prettier looking. Oh, that's just gonna break my whole scene. <laughs> oh no. Um, we'll Mario to... Kart Double Dash for me is the most pretty Mario Kart game. Like even today, I love the aesthetics of the game. I think the art style was fantastic. Uh, the yeah. racing was a little bit different from what I was used to, but again, it holds up really well today and stands on its own as being a very unique experience. And then the co-op aspects of it were a lot of fun. And then if you get into the GC online server to play it over LAN, it could be a ton of fun as well. So definitely think it is still worth trying out today and is definitely a stronger showcase for Mario Kart gameplay than a lot of later entries in the series. So Definitely one everyone should be checking out if you haven't, if you haven't had the pleasure of it. It will definitely kick your butt for a long time until you learn the mechanics, but it is well worth it once you do. So we're just going to go ahead and call it there. Wiz, Zachary, thank you again for joining me today. Yep. Appreciate it. Um, yep. But yeah, we'll just... And, uh, yeah. yeah, good game. I have some complaints, but yeah, good game overall. <laughs> uh, I still love it to death, even with my nitpicks <laughs> well, there we go <laughs> there we go but we'll yeah. go ahead and call it here for this one so thank you for watching everybody we'll see you back next month for game of the month something <laughs> <laughs> all right so my mic was turned off for the first five minutes of that by the way uh-oh that's terrible yeah, that was great how long was that though that was pretty uh, good. hour 14